If you want to do science on the move in Antarctica, you need the right type of transportation. It's called a tractor-train traverse, a combination of vehicles, sledges, temporary laboratories in tents and living accommodation. This unusual but essential form of travel supports the Natural Environment Research Council science programme ISTAR, investigating the stability of the West Antarctic ice sheet, bringing together scientists from the British Antarctic Survey and 11 UK universities. My name's Damon Davies and I'm a geophysicist at the University of Edinburgh. I'm here to take snow density measurements with a neutron probe. Stand by. The probe is lowered into a hole and consists of a sealed radioactive source which emits neutrons. These are scattered by hydrogen atoms within the snow to produce slow neutrons. The amount varies with snow density, giving information about annual snow accumulation and compaction on Pine Island Glacier, which is retreating faster than any other glacier in the world. The more data that we get, the more confident we can be um, in determining how these uh, surface elevation changes are actually affecting the amount of ice loss that Pine Island Glacier is experiencing and ultimately how that's contributing to future sea level rise. The Traverse also travels between seven sites on the glacier to collect seismic data. Hot water is used to drill a small hole 20 metres deep. Miniature charges at the bottom create vibrations which are reflected off the base of the ice and recorded for a seismic survey. This tells you whether the ice is lying on rock, sand or water. Scientists can then work out how the ice is flowing into the ocean and make predictions based on changes of temperature in the ocean or atmosphere. There are 12 GPS stations on the glacier, powered by batteries, solar panels and wind turbines. So this area you can see is one of our battery boxes. We've got two battery boxes per GPS system. That little black box you can see that's the key part of the operation, the GPS is inside that. By recording signals from satellites, GPS receivers can determine how far the ice has moved towards the sea. Being on the move means scientists can also set up research stations in prime locations. As although satellites are incredibly useful, being on the ground offers that important close-up view of what's happening in Antarctica. Drilling for ice cores produces cylinders of ice. These frozen time capsules provide information about temperature and in the form of trapped air bubbles, a sample of the atmosphere. Together they chart the evolution of climate and the environment. The ice cores from the iStar project produce 50 to 60 years worth of data. These are analysed at the British Antarctic Survey headquarters in Cambridge. It's exciting to be involved in a, a drilling project. And when you bring up these segments of the ice, you know it tells a story from what we do in Cambridge. And you want that story to be revealed. The story contains a history of the Earth's climate. But this extraordinary work is often done under extraordinary conditions. And sometimes your bed is not always where you left it. Uh, well, we had a rather exciting New Year's Eve. So we're all in the caboose uh, enjoying the coming in as a new year and the wind got up to about I think it was about 65 knots in uh, at its highest peak um, and it was a complete whiteout really I think you can see about two meters in front of you um, so most of us managed to stagger back to our tents and found them in a variety of conditions extreme conditions make Antarctica one of the most challenging and exciting places to live and perform science in doing so, scientists are helping us understand how not just the continent is changing, but how the world is changing too. Working out the balance between the Antarctic ice and the oceans is crucial.